Okay, now we come down to the Golden Lake. Um, we're going to try and pick up a few tips and tricks for you um, from one of the best in the game, which is Simon Clark from Catfish Pro. Um, without doubt, in my opinion, one of the best catfish anglers in Europe, so he, he should be able to show you some nice tips. Um, thanks for coming, Simon. Um, so you've got a few rigs set up here for us. If you can just uh, show us quickly what this one's for. Um, yeah. yeah, sure. Basically, the main thing with catfishing is to keep things simple. Um, so if you're using something like luncheon meat or pellets, you want a standard hair rig and you've got one here. The only thing you need to do if you're catfishing is just make sure that that hair is long enough. Okay, so luncheon meat is a very good bait. You can use pieces this big. This is a normal size piece I would use. The reason why I use a piece this big is to avoid nuisance fish like carp and bream. They just mm -hmm. physically can't fit it in the mouth. Then what I've put through is actually some um, tubing there right the way through so that when the hair actually goes through when it's on the hair when it's moving around it doesn't actually get it doesn't actually cut through so you can put that on the hair like that okay, okay. you've got the hair on like that standard hair rig uh, or you can slide pellets on there as well the only thing I would advise is if you're using something like that or pellets with a big hole in is usually put a little bait shield on onto your hair before the boily stop and it will just act as a little as a cushion it'll sit on there yeah. and act as yeah. a cushion otherwise a boily a, a sort of uh, boily stop can get pulled through okay. okay so that is your basic hair rig fished on a braided hook link in this case cat link uh, which is very abrasion resistant thank you very much okay. Right, Simon, um, we've had a look at a, a luncheon meat rig. If you could just um, show the guys at home the best way to present a bunch of worms, please. Yeah. Okay. All right, for things like uh, worms and dead baits and something like pastes, where you're not worrying about using a hair rig, um, then just simply a straightforward hook onto a hook link. Okay. Nothing too fancy, fished on a, on a running rig put your worms or your dead bait, clip it on there. The only thing I would advise is that things like worms, also squid, liver and dead baits are quite bulky baits and can sometimes mask the hook point. So if you use one of the little bait shields, a little thick heavy rubber disc and that will just push your bait round the hook so okay. that it's pushed back to here and it won't mask your hook point. Fished on a running rig so therefore, you know, there's no bolt rig set up, just a running ledger, because otherwise the cats will sense in the resistance and are very adept at dropping baits. Yeah, okay. And just as a quick point, if somebody wanted to pop the worms up, would you so, inject, but, inject them in with air? Yeah, maybe? so basically you've got two choices. If you're fishing worms, you want to pop them up. So if you've got, if you've got weed in front of you, or you want to sort of fish them up in mid-water, then you can either um, air inject the lobworms, being very careful to make sure you don't go anywhere near your fingers and that will pop them up and you can counterbalance the rig with a bit of tungsten putty or a split shot or you can actually fish a completely different rig which is um, a rig whereby you're actually putting foam poppers onto the hook link these are specifically designed to be able to squash if the catfish grabs the whole rig okay. and that will sit up in the water like that okay. and lift it right up and that is more buoyant so if you don't want the bait to go into weed then this will sort of go down and stop with air, air injected lobworms is good for a muddy bottom where you just want to lift them up a bit okay so they could get caught up in weed if there's weed there thank you very much all right thanks for that simon um if you don't mind could you just talk to somebody about the the material you're using there i mean obviously a lot of lads are coming from the cart world um who are used to using braids but if you could just describe the kind of what that's made up of for them. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of hook links here that are the two types you primarily use for catfishing. One is uh, the braided hook link, which is actually cat link, which is actually a sort of armoured braid. So that's actually okay. um, uh, aramid base, which is what they use on stab proof vests. So that when the cat is actually got the, the hook in its mouth, quite often the head will turn and the line will go across the top of the teeth okay. and it won't wear through. So normal fine carp braids are a little bit too light for that, particularly if you're tackling some of the monsters in horseshoe. Um, so that's a very hard material. 
the other one here and this is a low memory mono this is tough link you can also use uh, fluorocarbon and these are hard low memory monos uh, which are resistant to the cat's teeth because cat's teeth aren't sharp they're abrasive yeah okay so and that will stand quite a bit of rubbing but if you catch any catfish you should always check the hook link after you've landed just to make sure it's not yeah rubbed i up do favor the fluorocarbon um, fluorocarbon personally which that's my personal preference but mm. um again the cat link cav kevlar for your for the pellets i think is superb so yes it's a bit limper um so it's a bit limper than the um than the um uh, than the sort of low memory stiffer yeah fluorocarbon yeah. time links Thank you very much. Uh, Simon, if you could, like I say, a lot of lads are coming when they come, they're generally carp anglers who want to try and catch the first cat. Um, trying to distinguish on the feeding patterns because they're obviously, they feed very different. Uh, could you tell us a, bit, a little bit about that? Uh, Yes, I, th I think um, what I have to bear in mind is that the catfish is one of nature's winning designs. It's an ancient species, of it's, it's almost like a, comparing it to a crocodile mm -hmm. you know, in the animal world. Uh, and they're a fairly simply designed fish, uh, and they're pretty much you know, a large mouth and a stomach. Yeah. Um, they are a fish which is omnivorous, so they have a mixed diet, but they are predatory. Um, key things about when you're fishing for catfish are that catfish spend a longer time not feeding than any other fish in the UK. Okay. okay. So you can be doing everything right and quite comfortably not catch. Yeah. Okay. Um, they are a, um, and when they're not feeding, they do tend to go and lie up somewhere, normally somewhere under cover. Yeah. So if you're looking for swims, if you've got overhanging trees, that sort of thing, uh, there's always a chance there may be some fish there. Yeah. Um, they will feed um, during the day. Quite often if they're coming out on a binge feed and they can come out at any time of day, certainly on, on the lakes here which have got a bit more colour in, so uh, Golden on Long Lake, I'd be more confident of catching during the day. Yeah. Um, but you can catch you can catch at any time. Uh, but they are a very shy fish uh, and therefore keeping quiet on the bank uh, is an advantage and also which is probably why I think a lot more tend to get caught at night. Yeah. Uh, more consistently at night because people are walking around less and less vibrations. Yeah. So, is there any kind of pattern with? Uh, it's just maybe a silly thing to say. With the amount of time that they, they do feed, is it two days, three days, four days when they're on this binge, or is it they feed when they're hungry? I, I have the opinion that a fish feeds when it's hungry. Yes, that. Um, yeah, I agree that they do feed. They do feed when they're hungry, and they seem to have a. They seem to have about a thirty-hour feeding cycle on average. You know, over lots of years of, uh, yeah. of of actual observation. I mean, you can still um, uh, you can still catch every day, but normally I would say maybe two, three, four, f five times during the summer, you will get what I call a silly a binge feed, where literally yeah. it's like a light switch has gone off and everything is feeding, and, bizarre, yeah. and you can catch you know you can get way more than you normally can. So. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, just one final point. Um, a lot of people when they come to me they ask me about the resistance side I don't I don't mean the rig side of the resistance obviously running leads are better yeah. at the other end the real end the swingers I hope I'm right in saying this that it's not resistance it's changing resistance where the problems occur is is that right in your opinion yeah. um, yes yes I mean that's uh, yeah um, my thoughts and my opinion are that yeah, consistent resistance is a little bit like eel fishing and pike fishing. Yeah. I would say that 80% of my cat fishing is done with straight through to a bait runner reel with a bait runner on the minimum setting. Yeah. No bombings, no nothing. Yeah. Um, certainly because they they quite often are a bit suspicious when they pick up a bait to start with mm. and can eject it quite easily. So. Um, so I've, yeah, constant seen, resistance, they're, yeah. they're more comfortable. I've with. seen it on a few occasions where people are fishing very really slack lines with a swinger and you can you can see the line getting taut until the swinger starts to move and then it's, it's game over because yeah. they felt it. Yeah. So it's, Yes, they are very adept at ejecting baits, so yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so people should just bear that in mind. Yes, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you Mark.